Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to Hurricane Milton. Man, this this hurricane season in the States has been... I don't even know what to say. Like, you know, with Hurricane Helene that happened, I mean, the the recovery efforts are still ongoing. I think the, the, the death toll is approaching like... It's in the 200s now. It's just really really terrifying like to anyone in the area like honestly my thoughts and prayers are genuinely with you um i'm i've been i'm gonna donate to a charity today that's you know aiding in the recovery efforts because yeah it just I, it feels like this tornado season in in america has definitely been worse than recent years um i think i read somewhere that there's still a thousand people over a thousand people missing that haven't been recovered um, and now there's, uh, you know, the next one, it's uh, Hurricane Milton, like this one is just, and apparently it's, it might be one of the most powerful hurricanes ever, like in American history. You might have seen this today, this, uh, an emotional report from the NBC Miami meteorologist and hurricane specialist, John Morales. Uh, he was being interviewed live today um, when the news crossed that the storm had grown explosively into a Category 5. Watch. We want to begin with Hurricane Specialist John Morales. John, now this monster of a hurricane is a Category 5? Yes, uh, that news just came out right now. Uh, and uh, it's certainly, uh, it's just an incredible, incredible, incredible hurricane. Uh, it has dropped. Wow, he's overwhelmed. It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Oh, man. Um, I apologize. He this knows it's going to be bad. Horrific. Oh, I might have seen this today. So he knows it's going to be bad. My word. Good evening and welcome, everyone. In Florida tonight, the calls to evacuate are being met with a renewed sense of urgency as Floridians, with fresh memories of Hurricane Helene, mm. prepare for the second major hurricane to strike the state in just two weeks. Jeez, hurricane man. Milton has rapidly intensified today, now a cat. 180 miles an hour. That is insane, man. That will knock you off your feet for sure. Category 5, spinning sustained winds at an eye-watering 180 miles per hour one of the strongest Atlantic hurricanes on record. The storm powering its way across the Gulf of Mexico toward the Florida Peninsula tonight, where forecasters anticipate it will be an extremely serious threat to Florida as it aims toward the state's widely populated midsection, likely late Wednesday into Thursday. The storm potentially will dump up to 5 to 10 inches of rain, local amounts up to 15 inches, and expect to generate a storm surge potentially as high as 15 feet. 15? Like, do you guys think climate change is making hurricanes worse? Just your gut instinct. Like, just ignore what you're hearing from politicians. Just what's your gut instinct telling you? Because my gut instinct is saying yes, but what do you guys think? Right now, 51 Florida counties are under states of emergency with many coastal areas under mandatory evacuation orders. Al Roker is here now with the latest on Milton's path. Al, good evening. Good evening, Lester. Much of the state of Florida under hurricane watches, hurricane warnings tonight. As we watch this system start to push in, we can see right now 180 mile per hour winds moving east at 10, 80 miles west northwest of Progreso, Mexico. As this system pushes to the east, we look for landfall sometime tomorrow night as a category three storm. Don't worry about the, the, the categories. It's this system that is going to be a monster storm. We're talking Damn. about storm surges, 5 to 10 feet from Cedar Key to Tampa, 10 to 15 feet from Tampa to Sarasota. How does 10 to 15 feet compare to uh, Hurricane Helene? Is it about the same size, a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger? Six to 10 feet down through Fort Myers, 11 million people at risk for tornadoes, damaging winds million. as well. And we're looking for anywhere from 10 to 15 inches of rain, a moderate risk of flash flooding, river flooding. And Lester, this is just going to keep going right on into Thursday. It finally clears out, but we're going to be talking about this right into next week. All right, Al, thanks very much for that. There is an urgent race to get out of the storm zone in Florida. And Please, anybody watching this is in Florida that's able to evacuate, please do. Please do. And if you can't, 
oh man, I, I guess just get into a, I, I, do they recommend getting into a higher elevated space to, to keep away from the water? And clear out the debris from Hurricane Helene that could make this new hurricane all the more dangerous. Tom Yamas is there, and Tom, this is indefinitely a race against the clock. Wow, look at all the stuff behind It is, me. Lester, and you can see why just behind me, there's damage all the way down this block from Hurricane Helene. And residents know this next hurricane is even more powerful. Damn. Plus, they're dealing with this right now, piles of debris, which is going to make the storm surge even more dangerous, and it's going to add projectiles to the air because of those hurricane-force winds. Tonight in Florida, residents facing mountains of debris from one hurricane. Gosh, so, they've, so the city's not even recovered fully from Helene. And this one's just about to get slammed into him again. Oh, man. Kane, and now another monster storm barreling towards them. The second time in less than two weeks. And this one may be even more catastrophic. You always worry, but this one, there's something about this one that I'm feeling very uneasy about. With Hurricane Milton strengthening to a dangerous Category 5, at least six counties have issued mandatory evacuation orders. If you remain there, you could die. Damn. My men and women could die trying to rescue you. Highways are clogged. I mean, it was blunt, but it was honest. You know, no BS, just straight up, you know? Odd with people fleeing inland. On NBC6 South Florida, meteorologist John Morales reporting on Milton's intensification. He has dropped 50 millibars. Yeah, he's just... In 10 hours. He knows what's coming. Um, I apologize. This is just... Horrible. Horrific. That rapid intensification fueled by climate change, just like Helene before it. The remnants from Helene, broken furniture and downed trees are still everywhere. Uh, this creates a, a safety hazard and it also will increase the damage that Milton could do uh, with flying debris. Yeah. Florida's governor has called it a debris removal mission, asking counties to work nonstop to get rid of all this junk even ordering waste and landfill sites to stay open through the night. NBC. Yeah, everybody's got to do what they can, you know. Everyone's got to pull together. That's what it's going to take to, to minimize the, the, the losses here. You know, everyone's got to just help each other. News is Marissa Parra found that effort continuing today in overdrive. I'm in Treasure Island, one of Florida's barrier islands. It is filled with debris like this. They've called in all reinforcements to remove it. Just look at this line of city trucks, garbage wow, trucks behind just... me. All over the Whole Gulf Coast, they're getting ready, including at Tampa General. This video went viral during Helene. Facilities Chief Dustin Pasteur checking the aqua fence as it kept Tampa Bay from entering hospital rooms. He hopes it's strong enough for Milton. 12 feet with a high tide gets us very close to our limit here. And so that's a little concerning if that's actually what we see. In nearby Madeira Beach, we were... Man, just look, every property in this, in this picture we can see has just a mountain of damage, like broken furniture. Oh, man, this has all got to be replaced, probably by them. If they're lucky, they might have home insurance, like content insurance. We were with Abby Lewis as an emergency notification went off, telling her to evacuate. Helene took her home, and Milton... May take more. You, you don't even have time to cry. Well, you can't. No. Oh, <laughs> no. So Horrible. that'll be like after Horrible. Milton or what's to follow. Tom Yamas, NBC. Man, hopefully there's no more after this. Please, for the love of God. NBC News, Madeira Beach. And in western North Carolina, no end to the struggle after Hurricane Helene's floodwaters isolated so many communities. Many people forced to rely on each other for help. Antonia Hilton is there. Tonight, President Biden sending 500 more troops into North Carolina as the reality of recovery sets in. Thousands still without running water, some loved ones still missing. The National Guard showing NBC News their challenging operation. Do people have electricity now? Because I remember hearing there were blackouts for like five days. Like has most of the uh, the affected areas, do they have power? Because being able to communicate, big deal in, in times like these. As they navigate through North Carolina's Blue Ridge Mountains, Wyatt Bumgarner grew up in this terrain, a cowboy and professional horse trainer. Hey, sweetie. When Helene hit washing away roads and homes, that homegrown knowledge became crucial for towns yeah. like Burnsville. Come on, friends. 
Word got out that Wyatt and his friend Tracy Adams had the skills to head up into hills and bring hay and food to isolated farmers and rescue horses lost in the storm. Nice, How does it feel nice. for you to see people experiencing that kind of loss, to be finding animals who've been stranded for days in some cases? Um, that's kind of hard because it is such a devastating time. Call on your community and community has shown up. Residents here feel they're getting less federal support. Man, than this is why we need community, man. We need people to, to trust in each other again. You know, like we need, because times like this, having people that you could, that can help you is just so important. Like, in the city of Asheville. And that when help does come, people aren't always equipped. We've been having constant landslides. There is quicksand everywhere. There's mud that looks solid, but if you step on it, you'll sink up to yeah. your hips. Wow, look at all this of this stuff flying around. This Blackhawk community supplies on Sunday night when they failed to land. For many, federal aid feels slow. Have you seen anyone from FEMA? No. Fueling some misinformation about enough. how FEMA works. My understanding is they're broke. I mean, the most are given out is like $750. How can FEMA be broke? Isn't it like a government arm? What the hell is going on? I'm so... What? Governor Roy Cooper and FEMA assuring residents today funds and FEMA help are broke? here. FEMA is broke? FEMA has, I think, more than um, 104,000 people who have registered for assistance. More than $31 million has been distributed. But the list of needs is only growing as the weather gets colder. Mom Maria Sebastian telling us her daughters have been asking what happened. Was it a little scary? Yes. But they trust kind neighbors will get them through. And Antonio, thousands wow. of residents are still without power tonight as well. What? When is it expected to be restored? Still. Governor Roy Cooper announced that as much as 90% of the power supply could be back on tomorrow. But thank that fixing goodness. the water systems will take time, Lester. All right, Antonio, thank you. Thanks for watching. Man. Stay updated about breaking news. And What's going on, man? Like, let's, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think I... Yeah, here we go. So climate change likely made Hurricane Helene worse, really. Climate change makes the strongest hurricane stronger, increases rainfall, increases storm surge damage through sea level rise, and increases the probability of rapid intensification events. So there is definitely a link, it seems, between climate change and uh, making hurricanes stronger. I mean, is there any sort of thing to go against it, though? Like, uh, let's see here. Fact check. Is climate change making hurricanes worse? Uh, with floodwaters still high in parts of the southeast from Hurricane Helene. Uh, da, 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 da. Scientists say climate change makes these hurricanes larger, stronger and more deadly because of the historic rainfall. Uh, just give, give me the yes or no. Okay. No, this is a debatable point. And the increased temperatures that presumably would come from burning fossil fuels should lead to what? Lead to what? Just, I hate it when uh, articles, I, don't, I hate it's a strong word, but when articles just don't give you the, the, the short of it. Oh my goodness. And it's, it's, it's getting scary, honestly. If I was in the area of the affected, you know, the affected states, I would be... I'd be in a state of panic as well. I really, really would. Um, it just feels like the people there have not had time to recover, rest, you know, like take account of what property has been destroyed. And now they've got Milton that's just going to, you know, potentially be even more powerful. Like, you know, it's just there's and to hear that FEMA could be broke. Like, I really hope that's some kind of like sick joke because. FEMA, from my understanding, is the government arm responsible to, re to responding to these, you know, natural disasters. It's their job to get their boots on the ground, help out in any way they can, you know, w whether it's food, funding, any way they can. So to hear people saying that they're broke, like, that's just unacceptable. Can someone please sort of give me the lowdown on that? Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy my videos, please help me out by liking and subscribing.